Microsoft Dynamics Business Central is functionally a very rich application. It has a lot of out-the-box functionality. And then on top of that, it has a very capable and powerful development language called AL, which can allow us to, to modify or to extend the functionality of the base application to build industry-specific solutions or to make it more fit for purpose for a particular business. And it is the, the language really is incredibly powerful. It allows us to develop very deep and rich functionality relatively quickly as opposed to using traditional development languages. So why would we want to move outside of that platform? Well, there are a few reasons. One would be to allow us to, to build integrations into other applications. And another, which, which I think uh, is, is pretty a pretty good reason to do it is to embellish the application's interface. So what Microsoft has given us is a very bland interface. It's very standard Microsoft kind of look and feel, which is which is great. Uh, there are th times when it is worth stepping outside the boundaries of Business Central and, and using some JavaScript. A little bit of JavaScript can go a long way in embellishing the application, in making it prettier, and uh, sometimes making it just a little bit more intuitive and user-friendly for an end user. So what I would like to do with these series of chats is talk about using JavaScript in a Business Central environment, talking very much from the perspective of a Business Central AL developer, because full disclosure, I am absolutely not a JavaScript developer, and to find ways, to explore ways to basically make it easy to make our Business Central applications that little bit richer. And I hope that you will stay with me through these, uh, this series. Sit back, relax, get out your keyboard, and let's have some fun. Right, so how do we connect our Business Central world to our JavaScript world? So obviously, as you will know, in Business Central, we program in the AL language, and we use that to define the tables, the pages, the code units, the reports, and various other bits and bobs that all form part of the application. And that's pretty straightforward if you're familiar with AL. JavaScript, however, is a little bit more complicated. It's kind of got a bit of multiple personality disorder. So to become a, a proficient JavaScript developer, you will need to master three things. The first is HTML. And if you've ever looked at the, the raw code of a, of a web page, you will know that it, it looks kind of like hieroglyphics to the uninitiated. So one of the things that we will have to learn is how to use those strange start and end tags that are all over the pages. Then if you really want to make your JavaScript components look nice and pretty, you will need to learn how to do style sheets. And style sheets are used to change the look, the, the, the appearance of our JavaScript objects. So colors, styles, fonts, shapes of buttons and things like that are all defined through the style sheets. And then lastly, we have the JavaScript code itself, which provides the logic and basically plugs everything together. Then we need one more component, which is the thing to connect our business central world with our JavaScript world. And this you can think of kind of as a translator. It is a thing called a control add-in. It lives within the business central world. So we define it through a business central component called a control add-in. And that kind of passes information from one to the other. It allows us to send information from Business Central to JavaScript. It allows us to get things out of the JavaScript world and put them into Business Central. And it basically just provides that link, the, the connector between them. And in there, in here, we will define the what the controls are, what the JavaScript uh, controls are, so that Business Central knows that there is such a thing. And we will provide in this control add-in also a bunch of functions and events which facilitate the movement of data and the interaction between the two environments. One of the things that I've always wanted to do ever since I started working with Business Central is to be able to brand a page, to make it my own. And this is, a, as it happens, is a very nice, simple yet powerful use of plugging JavaScript into Business Central. It allows us to explore a couple of basics and get to something incredibly useful very quickly. One of the, the areas of debate is to how to arrange your files. So bearing in mind that for this, we will need our control add-in component, which is an NAL component. We will need uh, some JavaScript, and we will need potentially a style sheet, and we may potentially also need to have uh, uh, some HTML. Now, Many people prefer to keep those separate, so have all of the JavaScript code in one folder 
all of the HTML in another folder etc but I find it easier to keep them all together in a single folder and the way I arrange it is as follows so if we go into this folder called control add-ins I have built already a number of control add-ins code is already written and I will step through how it has been put together but I have created five separate add-ins here under each of these add-ins and I'm going to open up this one. This is the first one we are going to work with. All of the components that I need for this particular add-in, I have put into this one folder. So I have a style sheet. I have, in this case, one JavaScript file. I have an AL file and I have some pictures. The second component we need to define is our startup JavaScript. So I have called this file startuplogo.js. The only thing that you absolutely have to have, of course, is JS. And that full name is the thing that is plugged in over here on the AL file. This is the thing that tells it what to put on the page. And it does that through a JavaScript instruction called insert adjacent HTML. Very basic. It takes two parameters, a position before end in this case, and then a, an HTML string which will tell it what we are putting on the page. Now, what is that that we are putting on the page? I'm glad you asked. So we could have defined this here. We could have, could have defined just one long command, but because I like to show my work, like my old high school maths teachers used to tell me, and because in my opinion, it makes it a little easier both to maintain and to reuse this code in other places. I like to do it step by step and break it down into a number of variables. So the first very simple variable, style commands, normal style sheet commands, and that I have defined as a variable called image style, and that is plugged in over there. Second and third lines of this definition define a path and a file name. Why would I do them separately? Well, it does, again, make it easy. If I want to reuse this, I can easily just take this whole thing, put it somewhere else and go and edit either my path or my file name or both. It's nice and easy to understand and I don't run the risk of damaging my complicated HTML stroke JavaScript command down the bottom here. So I can simply change this to a different name and I will get a different logo. Then what I have done is I've taken those two variables plugged them together into a third variable, insert image. That is now going to be used in a business central command or a not so much business central command, but a call to a business central object. And that is defined using this exact syntax, Microsoft Dynamics.nav dot get image resource and I plug my insert image variable into there so this will at runtime contain the path the full path and the image name the image file then the last thing that I've done here is to create yet another variable this time the variable is an object a JavaScript object which is defined through the keyword document and the keyword dot get element by ID and then we use the fixed string do not deviate from this the word control add in note lowercase c the capital A and the capital I and then we basically plug all this together using the variable logo my, my object logo so logo insert adjacent HTML keyword before end or we in the section of my page I'm going to put it and then this built up HTML string keywords the, the opening tag is ing so start with literal string less than sign ing and a space concatenated to image style which is the variable at the top again concatenated to another keyword src so I have to open that with a, a space to separate it from my image style definition equals double quotes and then close with a single quote then concatenate that to image resource which is this thing over here concatenate it to the end tag so the end tag is enclosed in single quotes and it will start with it will basically contain the double quote to match the double quote over here and the greater than to match the less than over there moving on so we've now defined our JavaScript commands and we have defined our control add-in. The last thing we need to do is to put this on a page. So in keeping with traditional ways of managing business central components, I have a folder called pages. I have created in here a page called splash page, which I'm going to build up to be my own little landing page. So when, an, when my application starts, it will have a logo and it will have a bunch of other things on it uh, which I have embellished with with um, with JavaScript and this you know again this is a very simple usage of JavaScript but the definition for this purpose is 
really 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 simple so in my content area under layout under content i have created a thing called user control that is obviously you can see from the the color there you can see that that is business central command and then i give it a name that's the name within this particular page that's the control name and then i give it the name of the control add-in that is the thing that is defined over here under the control add-in its name is called application branding i i've given it uh, application area all because i may want to use this in older versions obviously you don't need it if it's if you're plugging it into version 22 onwards and i use visible true probably don't need that but there it is and that's as simple as it is i'm now ready to compile and i am going to do that by pressing Control F5 and I'm going to put it into my very brand new version 23. Let me just move this over here and voila there is our logo. Nice little logo at the top. Again a very pla plain page at the moment but we will build this up as we go with a few other components. So if we look at the code we have our Control add in user control that's the keyword. We have the AL component over here, which is called control add-in, and we have a startup script. If you were paying attention, you will have noticed that I did not actually get to discussing the style sheet. I've put it in here, but in this case, I've defined basically nothing in there because this is, as I say, so simple that we should, uh, we have basically done everything in the one file. The last thing that I have done is I have created a nice reusable fact box so a page within business central defined as a card part and onto there i have put the exact same control add-in so here it is user control i've called it logo again and i have referred it to my control add-in called application branding two basic parameters and because this is now a card part i can use it as a fact box to plug it into pretty much any page in my application and to illustrate how that transposes into the real application i'm going back here if i go and i say search for my customers do -do 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 -do, customers and pick a customer and voila there is my logo so wherever i whenever i'm sitting in my customer page i am reminded that this brilliance comes to you courtesy of braintree